be enough and get those ranking points in. And a very similar story for Jody. Once you get into the Grand Slam qualifying, you have four big opportunities a year to learn, to play against the big players, to potentially qualify, reach the main draws, as say Harriet Dart has done that we saw yesterday. We'll see her up again later. And that, uh, that Emma took a, a win against. And you get to test yourself against the best. So that's the next stage for her to focus on. Yeah, Harriet will play uh, for the third place playoff um, in the final match on this court just a, a little later. In terms of their rankings, Jody, UK number seven, world number 287. Emma, UK number 13, world number 338. And, and you say you learn a lot from playing against the best players. I, I know that Jody in particular took huge comfort from beating Joe Conter in one of the Battle of the Brits encounters and said afterwards, suddenly she realizes the gulf between where she is now and those at, at the very top of the game is perhaps not as wide as she thought. So um, that, that's got to be a, an invaluable experience for her. Oh, absolutely. And we've seen, I think, across the board for, for the guys, for, for the girls, um, being able to play against players that they just wouldn't normally get the chance to. The tournaments that, that Emma and Jody play, somebody like a Conte, she's not in those tournaments. She's playing at a higher event, and it's been the same for the men as well. So to get those huge opportunities to really see where you're at, see how you're progressing, and, also, and see that difference, and then realize I can do that. Just give me a few more months and I can, I can do that. It's absolutely just invaluable. And I just love that the British players are looking so sharp, so ready, so desperate to get out into the international events. And they are going to have a massive advantage over other nations because of what they've been able to do here. Well, I've mentioned that this is their fifth meeting in six weeks. Two wins apiece in that time. Jodie was very quick to say that the overall head-to-head -head is 3-2 to her. So um, that meant a little something. What's going to happen today in this match, Naomi? Who's going to win it? I, I honestly have no idea. I, for, for me, up until yesterday, Jodie had been playing the best, best tennis of the tournament uh, and had been looking really good. And she did get a win. She just, just stole a win against Emma earlier in the week. But Emma's performance yesterday was tremendous. If Emma could play like she did yesterday in the semi-final, I think she could take the win. I think anything less than Jodie's experience might win out. It should be very special. Let's find out what uh, is uh, going to unfold. Uh, Naomi's heading up to the commentary box. Already in position there are Marcus Willis and Barry Mills. Thank you very much, Marcus. Yes, we are delighted to be here. Coming to the conclusion now of this UK Pro Series that has been staged so brilliantly at the St George's Hill Lawn Tennis Club in Weybridge, just southwest of London. And uh, you've set it up very nicely there with Naomi as... Uh, the two players warm up, continue their final preparations for this, their sixth encounter, the uh, series that uh, began for them last year in a Bolton ITF event that they uh, played out, which Burridge came from a set down to win 6-4 in the decider. Radicano then a tour win, British tour win earlier this year, 10-4 in a match tie break. She won again in straight sets in the first of their Battle of the Brits two encounters. And then it was Burridge who came through 10-7 in a match tiebreak in the second of those. And of course, the most recent indicator is the one that they played the other day in the uh, box B on uh, the round robin stage of this final week. And eventually, Jody Burridge just came through that 10-6 in the match tiebreak. She won the opening set, lost the second, and narrowly got through the final set. So in terms of closeness, in terms of uh, the games they've been playing, a lot to look forward to, Marcus uh, Willis alongside me. Um, it should be a cracking final, a really good conclusion to uh, what we've had all week. Yeah, I think the deserved finalists here, they've been playing very, very good tennis. They have indeed. For we more than just this week. Um, I've commentated on a couple of Jody's matches, she's playing very well, very steadily, and obviously I've seen the results from, from elsewhere. Can't really call this one. <laughs> it's very difficult to, to yeah. pick a winner, isn't it? I mean, Jody is um, is totally unbeaten. The only loss for Radicanu was against Jody Burridge uh, in that uh, round robin encounter. But uh, the 17-year-old Emma Radicanu to take on the 21-year-old Jody Burridge. Sit back and enjoy this wherever you're viewing from. Great to have your company. It should be a rousing conclusion to uh, the women's singles here this week in terms of the uh, outright champion and of course a lot of prize money up for grabs this match alone 
Well, the runner-up will receive $15,000, and the champion will walk away with $20,000. Of course, another of the playoff matches continuing on the other court. <laughs> a lot of noise going on there, an extreme rally at the moment between Abuthnot and Christie. We'll keep you posted on that, but now we focus on Radicanu in the women's final. Well, she isn't a player who gets distracted on the court. Generally speaking, she's very even-tempered. So too Jody Burridge. Lots of smiles beforehand. Hopefully, will be played in a keenly competitive but good spirit. Of course, there's always a bit of an edge when the, the pressure mounts, and there was certainly a bit of that yesterday. Radicanu against Harriet Dart. But as Emma said afterwards, well. She kind of thrives on that. She recognizes that when another player is getting perhaps a little bit chirpy and a bit hot under the collar, it's because they are feeling the pressure and uh, she's able to uh, make the most of that, what she expects. There is that searing shot that we've always seen from Burridge up the line. It's been her, her real rock, her strength, but as Naomi was saying with Marcus Buckland in the build-up, uh, the way that her forehand has also developed, great to see her now and hopefully those injury problems behind her. Radicani will have to be well aware of that. But she closes quickly on the short reply. so important for these players it's not just developing the skills developing the court craft but also how to play mentally how to deal with match after match day after day because if when the tour resumes in a big way for them and they get to a higher level the hopes of battling high level opponents and getting deep in tournaments will require that more it's a clean hit from Burridge to bring up the first break point of this women's final and I'm delighted to say Naomi has now uh, come up and joined us for this matchup and uh, already Jody Burridge showing a thing or two with uh, her intent here Naomi yeah it's gonna be a big hitting match really enjoys uh, firing off winners off the backhand side But it was the return that was absolute quality, right back pushing Radicanu off that baseline and then Burridge full bore on the forehand winner to grab the first game, to break through right at the start of this women's final. Well, she's been so positive right from the start of the week, hasn't she, Burridge, and uh, the way she has taken out all opponents, including Radicanu already. That must just make her feel, yep, know what to do when it comes to the crunch and uh, she's made a very strong statement of intent here at the start. We saw how Radicanu a couple of matches ago was uh, perhaps overhitting at times but how she learned to perhaps take a little bit off the ball when trying to open up the court making the angles and we'll see how she might try and apply that here this afternoon. Burridge to serve for the first time in competition today. Had to go and collect her own ball, of course, because uh, due to the lockdown restrictions enabling this uh, tournament to go ahead, but there has to be a limit on the social person-to-person uh, -to -person interaction on court. Limit that as much as possible. So no line judges, no ball kids. The players to call their own lines. And the umpire to uh, overrule if necessary. A length ball again and again there from Radicanu. Yeah, with the Burridge 
game style at the moment. She just looks so clear on what she's trying to do on every single point. I mean, sometimes it doesn't work out and some errors are going to come. She does play an aggressive style. Been working a lot with David Felgate and Colin Beecher alongside today. David was here earlier in the week. And Radicano will know quickly there that again if she leaves it short that's going to get hammered away it was just put away with disdain by Burridge on the forehand set it up just too flat into the higher part of the net and the backhand side for Radicani her strength as well what she'll be looking to use I mean she can fire things off of both wings much like Burridge doesn't quite possess the same amount of pace as Burridge Tennis. That was a wonderful cross court from Emma Raducanu. The backhand really forced pressure on Burridge and then taken well out of the air again. And she is good at that. I'm watching it clearly under the roof here. It's a pleasant day outside now, but it, of course we're grateful that this has been played indoors, albeit it was stifling in the first few days because of the intense heat. But because of the rain of the last couple of days. It's meant that we've had no problems getting through the matches. Of course, every player involved every day. Interesting to see what sort of level Raducanu can produce today. So we saw a little earlier on, and what we saw from her yesterday was of such a high level. For me, some of the best tennis I've seen from her. And it just feels like the demand, the requirements to beat Jodie Burridge are pretty similar in terms of having to find that level and sustain it through the match. Has a go, doesn't make it, and so it is a two-love lead already for uh, Jody Burridge. Early stages, but uh, just playing like the leading candidate here, and uh, has certainly shown how to do that throughout the week. Burridge. Straight sets wins to start off with for Burridge against Maloney, Appleton and Gray. Then the battle with Raducanu, that match tie break 10-6 that she took. Nadia Rawson she saw off in straight sets and she was leading Eden Silver yesterday. And Silver had to uh, pull up, not feeling well, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully she will be back this evening to play the, uh, the final match, the uh, concluding match on this main court in the third and fourth place playoff against Harriet Dart. quarter given by either eventually a swing too strong from Burridge on the backhand but yeah played at a blistering place you can see Raducanu sort of reacting after that exchange yeah quality stuff and something that I think 
for, by Raducanu getting the opportunities to play the likes of Harriet Dart and Jodie Burris, just recognizing that, okay, if you play people who are lower down in the ranks, 500, 600, maybe the pace can overwhelm them. But actually, Burridge uh, and even Dart yesterday feeling comfortable with it. It was the width brought in, as you were saying, Barry, earlier on. That's what was doing the damage. Great for Emma to get a look at these levels and what is required. She's had a couple of runouts against players ranked highly. Jodie has been a combination of being able to play so far up, but also have to play with the pressure on. And he's ranked player here, not by much, but she will really be wanting to come through this. Splendid strike, not coming back there, right up the line from Radicanu. So she gets on the board, albeit a little bit uh, late in the day, having been broken at the start. But uh, at the moment, it's Jodie Burridge who leads 2-1 in the opening set. Getting into this women's final now. This concluding day to the UK Pro Series, the classic week. 24 of the leading players from the UK involved day after day. And we're already getting involved in a really hard fought battle between two young talents. Jody Burridge leading off here. Slightly higher ranked of the two. She's about just under 50 places above Radicanu in the world ranking. She is four years older, she's 21. Radicanu is still 17. I think. Here comes Radikhanu's first opportunity to get the break back quickly in this opening set. wide. Can't say I agree with that. No. <laughs> Pretty clean. Burridge digging in. Determined not to let Nadekanu take it there. 
still quite a difficult place to get out of. Best serve, but that's a brilliant backhand. Yeah, knew exactly what she was trying to do with it. Lined it up brilliantly as well, just cutting off the angle and then leaning all the way through with the shot with the shoulders. Just got her that extra bit of width. She can take it a bit earlier. by Burridge there as she is broken back going too long but um, well the level already pretty intense Marcus yeah good level of tennis um, really good game by Radicano at two love and you then piled on the pressure there Burridge would be frustrated with that she got to 30 40 had a, had a chance in that rally but in the balance fair score I'd say yeah that call was a bit dubious wasn't it to say the least I mean they've got yeah. to make it in an, in an instant and it's it really is difficult calling serves I mean I found that myself I was sort of generous but yeah it looked good it looked good the umpire said she thought it was wide as well I can't say I agree but I yeah. don't think it'll be a defining um, point in the match hopefully not but as a player if you're in Burridge's you know yeah it's shoes, annoying it is annoying and you, you felt at the end there when she lost the game you know she hammered the ball away into the, the netting. I guess that's the way to release that tension. I mean, I've seen, some, on. I've, I've seen some, some awful calls the last few weeks. And the guy side of the draw, more, more so than the girls. There's been more, yep. more problems there. Um, that doesn't even touch the sides for what I've seen right. <laughs> these last okay. few weeks. So it's kind of the end, At the end of the day, you laugh it off, but at the time, it, it's not funny. And you just, I don't know just can disrupt the focus, can't it? Because you're so tuned to try and play your best and then you get irritated by that. You get irritated, you don't know if it's deliberate as well. You yeah. Don't know. That's the annoying thing. It's like people can make mistakes, that's fine, but when numerous times you think it gets a bit more annoying, but it's, it's an interesting new, new way of playing. <laughs> Radicanu, moving on. Lost the opening couple of games, but she has won the next three in succession. So it is Raducanu leading on serve at the moment in this opening set by three games to two. Burry's just uh, checking she's okay. Did she just catch her shin on the signage there? I think she's all right. <laughs> Hopefully. We don't want any anything underwater. Either player to get hurt here. We'll prevent this uh, final reaching a fitting conclusion.
a way to do it. Lovely combination. Talks a lot about the backhand of Burridge, but the serve as well is uh, such a big weapon. I think she's got great technique. She really does maximize well on that particular shot. It's quite tough to read as well. love that first backhand from Burridge yeah. down so low but what she did really well is just not overplay it it's so easy to try and go for pace especially off your best shot and you know you want the backhand line but she saw that it was low she looked at all the information on the ball and just picked the most appropriate sort of shot it was the best possible shot she could play without taking too much risk just see a slight red mark under her knee where I think she did catch that uh, sign at the end of the the court earlier on but yeah the movement there was fabulous and Radicanu not exactly hanging around on the court either she was really quick but it really does have the makings of, of some quality points through this decider great to see some of the best of British bringing it to the court like this She may have been broken in her last game, but she's held comfortably with that one. And they are even again, three games apiece. The uh, first set, of course, two tiebreak sets, and if they split those, then a match tiebreak decider. Wouldn't be the first one we've seen this week, would it? We've had so many of them. The quality, the competition has been absolutely ferocious. And they've both played their parts in uh, plenty of those. Brilliant. Lovely work off both wings and uh, not missing again right into that backhand corner. A really good striking from Burridge. Don't feel like Radicani did anything wrong in no. that rally at all. It was just that extra weight of shot from Burridge because she just has that more weight going through the ball. Radicani is a little more balanced with her body weight. Has to try and explode through the shot. Burridge got a bit more of a lean and it just gets you that extra zip. in Toronto her dad uh, Romanian her mother Chinese but they came with her family to the UK many years ago so she's uh, grown up in Great Britain
long. Just lifted, didn't she, with the shoulders. She had settled down on the ball and just popped up the head and that lifted the ball out of the back of the court. Barrage did defend well, didn't she, to the big strike previously. Radicanu struggling for, for length there. Burridge coming back deep. Error from the teenager. Break point for Jodie Burridge. It was a right sort of shot for Radicanu to look for going for the width, but just the way she executed it, just trying to pull off with the shoulders and pull the ball around and just lose a little bit of control that way rather than allowing the hands to do it. Again, so low down behind the ball. Just a little pull with the shoulders on that backhand. And I think that is just coming from the pressure of facing Burridge. She's just, she knows how good the, the quality needs to be. I mean, the backhand as a shot for Raducanu was absolutely superb. Just if you tip over into trying to force it, mm -hmm. those to creep in. Jumped on that. And again, easy to get wrong, but she took it so well. And the way we've watched her over the last few days, particularly here this week, just work things out during the matches, develop things, change things if need be, make slight adjustments. And all the while, that confidence that seems to be oozing through her game now. This time, Burridge making the call, the umpire agreeing with Burridge. Is that one all? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, that's rally of the match so far. Burridge so disappointed in the end to have lobbed long because she played some screaming shots in that, but so did Raducanu, just still there, still dealing with everything. And she has the advantage now. Has to lob the right shot there on the half volley. Not a huge amount of options available. I mean, no. I'd always say be making the opponent play the volley, especially can't give him the opportunity to miss. Try and just keep it as low as possible. Tough, that was a very good point. Yeah.
Burridge needing her running shoes again there to try and stick with Radicanu, who finishes it off emphatically up the line. That transfer again is very good from the teenager. And once more, the score moves along with serve. Radicanu, after putting that one away, heads back to her chair, eventually having collected her own towel and leads 4-3 in the first set. Living up to the billing, this women's final. A very fierce battle already as both players inspire under the roof here. As they have already covered some ground, hitting the ball very hard at times. Kept her focus there. A stumble for Radicanu, trying to cover across to her left. In that previous game from Radicanu was just absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Just relentless quality, mixing in the width with the pace. She looks so strong and balanced out wide. Dealing with what Burridge is throwing at her. Seems like she's coming on from where she left off yesterday. few days have been remarkable efforts she did lose to Burridge of course in that round robin match but only just 10-6 in a match tie break in their previous encounter here this week but then to get the better of Beth Gray from a set down as well she um, she clawed her way back in the first set saved numerous set points but didn't manage then to win the tie break however it didn't to bother her she just kept on pressing and improving and worked it out and eventually came through 10-3 in the deciding match tie break and then of course yesterday stepped up and bageled Harriet Dart the leading contender here in the first set and took the second which was much more competitive and closer than the, perhaps the scoreline would suggest but she did take it 6-3 so she's come in with form to this but so too has Burridge and Burridge here with points to make it four all now in their opening set. wondering if the umpire might uh, change sides and veer her way with a, an overall but to my mind that was a fair call and it is indeed four games all in this matchup the one on uh, court two between Beth Gray and Sonny Cartel has uh, Gray currently up 3-2 on serve in their first set that is a playoff for seventh and eighth places and still good prize money all round today available Seventh takes away five and a half thousand dollars. Eighth, five thousand.
ways these two mirror each other, don't they, with their, their game styles. It's about who's going to execute a bit better. A few errors and deal with the biggest points. Yeah, in terms of their, their overall game styles, you know, both looking to get the first strike in, both with the backhands and uh, you know, very effective serves. Just the way they go about doing that is is quite different. I mentioned that Radicani is just a little more balanced, mm -hmm. which means it's tougher to get her off balance in a lot of areas, pushing her backwards on the V. She deals with that so well. She sinks down nice and low and out of the corners. Burridge tends to lean a little more with her shoulders when she goes through the shots, so it can cause just a little bit of a delay when, say, recovering and losing balance. Can be, she can be a little bit more susceptible, but... Uh -huh. On the con or the for the positives, she gets that extra bit of pace leaning through with those shoulders as well. So there's pros and cons to both. But it's a slightly different uh, way of executing. It is a hold to love for Radicanu. So she's thrown the gauntlet down here, challenging Burridge to see if Burridge can hold again to stay in the set. Both with good indoor records this season and indoors here this afternoon. Radicanu right now sitting on a 5-4 lead in set number one. We've got a great battle going on here, and it's coming towards the business end now of this first set. Jodie Burridge serving to stay in it, 4-5. with the miss. Finds the T just. We really have seen players struggle to get a read on Burridge's serve. Really 
good use of the width of the court. The change of direction initially, just wrong footing. Radakanu here. And then a defensive ball back, taken out of the air. Took it very cleanly again. Important not to let that ball drop too low. Makes it much harder if you do. confusion here in terms of uh, making the call if it's close they have to call it the players themselves <laughs> still one point for Burridge despite losing that one shots with that backhand now and again it's just so good to see how she prepares for this ball and strikes through it yeah really good example of seeing the lean with the shoulders really doing a lot of the work really nice technique off that wing she's been sparkling this week here at St George's Hill She'll take a day to uh, rest up, recover, perhaps enjoy a round of golf. She's uh, keen on her golf. Radicano might be looking at highlights of uh, the Grand Prix tonight. She's a, dare I say, a petrol head. She's certainly an F1 fan. She loves her motorsport. Right now the focus on that yellow ball. And they can do with it here. It is nip and tuck between these two. And you'd imagine that it's so close that we'll get at least one tie break somewhere before this is decided. Really, there's nothing between them, is there? It's just about who executes when they do it. Yeah. The big mo it's just going to come down to moments this match. They're both producing a fabulous level. If there were ever going to be a draw in tennis, it'll be now. <laughs> A lot of aggression on that second serve. Radic 
Kanu, certainly the youngest player in the event this week. You've never had the feeling that she's in any way felt overawed by the occasion, by an opponent. Far from it. Still points to take another game out of this first set. wondering she had to race back be absolutely certain but that drops wide and it is still with serve Radicanu narrowly ahead 6-5 well she called it out you may wonder again we saw the replay but uh, not sure that Burridge could see clearly from there and the umpire on the other side anyway they move on as I say, Radicano leading 6 5. Again, Burridge serving to stay in this first set. Serving with new balls now. coming in for Burridge. It's something that has greatly improved. She's become a lot more patient with herself, trying to be her own biggest fan out on the court, but she does give herself a hard time, and I'm sure that's something that will continue to improve over the years. You can't just magic it overnight and totally change the, the way you feel on the court. starting to flow here for Burridge right at the crucial moment and this is what we were saying it's just going to be coming down to a moment in each set really All. Good serving from Burridge. Radicanu uh, seeing it differently, but not getting her way that time. serve and then the backhand yeah calmly done as well because she actually didn't have a huge amount of time but looked like she just about managed to take those extra couple of steps just before the, the strike just to make sure well worth it an extra bit of hard work it really does end up being worth it in the end
So we've got what we expected, which is a tie break to work out who's going to win this first set. That was a super hold from Burrows down, love 30, just locked in, knew she had the weapons. If she just executed those serves, she's going to get her chances to finish and done brilliantly. Radicanu there, she reacted afterwards thinking it was out, but no call and no overall from the line from the uh, umpire. Burridge, a mini break. On a strong cross court, forcing Radicanu into difficulty there. Two zip for Burridge. Yeah, after she got that big lean with the shoulders through the forehand like we talk about, also extending with the racket, just kind of that maximum penetration you can get off a big strike for Burridge. Right. Whoever comes out on the losing side of the set, it's going to sting because both really have played at such a high level. Radicani to get through her swing in time. Yeah. Nice healthy lead here. Super response from Burridge. Remember the last game down, love 30. Yeah, 30. Radicani two points away. Into the doubles alley. Into further trouble for Radicanu and Burridge. Now with two more points coming up on her serve, may clinch it here. A little fortune, but she needs a, a bit of help perhaps right now. Coming back into play off the net court. Changing ends after the six points. It really has just been some big hitting stuff, yeah. hasn't it? Baseline tennis at its finest. We've seen a few come, you know, moves forward as well. Nice uh, drive volleys from both players. Looking good up in the, the, the front section of the court. But this is all about pace and weight on the back of the court. Still thinking perhaps about that uh, early point.
to return, but how well Burridge dealt with him. That was really impressive. Such a powerful shot from Raducanu. That's her frustration channeled into it with everything she had, but it, although Burridge was rocked on her heels, she dealt with it. Set points. Clean hit to finish the set in some style. Excellent work all week from Burridge and a very tough opening set to this final. She emerges the winner of it, taking it on the tie break, seven points to one. And hopefully shortly we'll get a chance to uh, hear her thoughts at this stage of this title decider. Also, we'll wait to see how Radhakani responds next, but uh, Naomi's gonna have a quick word very shortly with Jodie. Hey Jodie, it's Cavs. Hey, uh, you all right? Well, how about that for a set, right? Big hitting stuff. What made the difference in that tie break? It was tight all the way through and then you ran away with it. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, tie break was a weird one. Um, I was just really on it. Um, and obviously first point, there was that little, I mean, yeah, I didn't call the ball out. And I think Emma kind of lost a bit of focus with that, but I was just, yeah, really getting on every single ball um, and getting the first hit in before her. So after winning a tight set like that, does that now make you feel like in the second you can open up a little bit more that you've got that in the bank or is it just more of the same? I think more of the same, to be honest. Um, I don't really think I can try to hit the ball any harder than I am um, <laughs> or try to do more than I am. Um, but yeah, I just want to keep the same focus, um, same footwork and um, same good attitude throughout the second. All right, thanks very much, Jodie. Looking good. Cheers. Marcus, a thought from you on, on what next for these two. What might Raducanu do differently, if anything? Well, it I was so close, wasn't I it? I think Up she played such a break. good first set. I don't think even think she played a bad tiebreak. It was a lot of Burridge winners, wasn't there? Yeah. So what can she do? She's playing very aggressively, very steadily. I, mean, I don't think she should come out and, and, and take any more risks than she is. Um, well, if it's as good as the first set, we're in for a good second. Yeah. We've seen Raducanu recover from tough starts plenty before. Not that it was a tough start, it was a very good start from both players. A very close fought first set, but uh, from a set down, that's what she's got to do again to try and come back through this second and then play a match tiebreak to decide. But a long way from doing that just yet. Got Burridge at love 30 again on the serve. Yeah, and I think Raducanu, I mean, I agree with Marcus, there's not a huge amount to change. I think life might be a little easier if she was able to get up the court a bit more with her feet because we're seeing these blistering strikes, but she's a good meter behind the baseline for the most part. I mean, she's not too far back. Maybe that would make life a little easier. But the trouble is, is the level of pace. Look, Jody said it, I can't hit it any harder. No. It's, it's incredibly difficult to do, but if there's a way that she could maybe get into that sort of position, then opens up a bit more width, a bit more angle, and actually her shots will just penetrate that extra bit.
lot riding on this match, isn't there? And every point now just feels bigger and bigger. Moments like that. Now that's really got under Jody's skin. Really frustrating at 15.30. You know, from her point of view, as she was saying, I was right there, I was able to play a shot. It wasn't like it was going to be a winner. I was in the rally. But uh, umpire deciding that uh, it was a wrong call. It seems she could certainly do with doing it right now, perhaps again, or finding a, another comprehensive way of taking the point, not allowing Raducanu really to get into it. But the teenager still with a break point. So nicely done. Got to love Wasn't that it? back behind. Yeah. And uh, Raducanu trying to cover the down the line, and I think that's right because that's Jody's best shot. So at least make her play the one that is maybe her second best shot. So it's not really much of a choice, to be honest. But still, really nicely done by Jody. And, you know, look, when it comes to the line calls, you've got to remember we're playing at such a pace here. And they've had one overall each, so. Be too how spoiled we are when we're watching the main tour with you know four kai and yeah. everything these days. But they're not used to it. <laughs> they don't have four kai <laughs> where <laughs> they play, so they've just well they had they'd have some lines judges. Yeah. So it's a, a little bit easier when you've only got one line to focus on, but uh, even then you're going to have lines judges who are looking through the net. You're not going to have a full. Mm -hmm. Wimbledon style level of, of lines judges on your court. So, you know, mistakes are a part of it as it is with any sport. Releasing the shoulders too early then, again, Raducanu. I love the intent, and I think she's so spot on with what she's trying to do. Just a, so another occasion where those shoulders have just pulled across. a smart play again and considering how peeved she was earlier in this game that some of the you know the classy plays that she's put on the court since then just show how you know, good she is thinking despite the frustrations of doing the right things and that was a clever little use of the drop shot drawing her in and then the volley back okay I think she tagged her but it wasn't meant no. No, smart play After all that, it goes down as a hold, you know, just another hold of serve. But that was what really we saw impressive. in that game, Marcus, was uh, plenty. That's impressive to, to bounce back the way she did. Two third ball winners, two first serves. Um, that, that's a really, really big hole for her because had she lost that game under the circumstances, she could have, uh, you know, it have been tough mentally for her to bounce straight back after that. Yep. She's They're the numbers on that first set, and as you can see, pretty much even all the way down each column there, side to side. It came down ultimately to the tie break, which Burridge was able to uh, race away with after they were neck and neck for so much of the set. Radicanu, just a hint of irritation there on her expression after not managing to break through. Of course, Burridge broke her at the start of the contest. Radicanu did come back to level for two all. And it's been a hold all the way since then.
And for me, I think there are so many encouraging things in the Burridge game that we've been watching through the week, as there are with the Raducanu game, if we're thinking, I mean, fast forward 12 months down the line, where they're going to be. But for, for Burridge to be down, love 30, 5-6, and then to lock into that service game like that, and then that last service game, 15-40, with you know, a bit of frustration as well with the situation. And then again to play almost perfectly to get herself out of that. It's something that's a little unusual for the bigger hitters, I think, in terms of the, the counter punches tend to be so good on the crucial moments at just sorting themselves out and not allowing themselves to miss and let that ball get away with them. So really impressive from Burridge. That one long. The previous one was good, but that just airing too far. Court from way back, cross court right into the left wing. Tough for Burridge from there. Yeah, we're getting a lot of chat about line calls between the two of them. I mean, we're having conversations about it ourselves as well up here, but it just the level has to be so good. They're having to play so close to the lines that these shots are kind of millimeters in or out so frequently. game from Raducanu, a couple of simpler points when she could get up into the blue with both of her feet. Again, I'm not saying it's an easy task for her to do that because the strike from Burridge is pretty devastating. I think that would hold anyone back behind the baseline, but if there's a way for Raducanu to do it, she's got to take that opportunity. Couldn't hang on to the last one, but the backhands from both during the rally. Incredible shots. <laughs> it's just great to watch them mixing it like this. Yeah, there's just no let up from either of them, is it? I mean, each one is earning the point, they're winning it. There's no, you know, there are no gifts going on, and no cheap points, there's no unforced errors that are peppering things. Could be some way to go yet. <laughs> Love that return. She's done so well to move forward. It was jumping up to the shoulder. It was not easy at all, but fabulous technique from Raducanu. And because she knew she felt strong behind it, she could then really go through the back of it, make sure it went away for a winner. Wrong. It's 
seen many shots like that from Burridge. When they played on Thursday in the round robin, Box B, Burridge won the first set. Then she won it 6-3, but she lost the second, 6-2. Clearly with similar intentions here to get a, a breakthrough in the second set and hit right back. And she's got chances again with break points. <laughs> Expect this return to come back. <laughs> zillion miles an hour if she gets onto it. Yeah, she tried to. <laughs> Great second serve there. Getting more pressure for Boris. the third service game in a row. She's yeah. been down by a couple of points and to wrestle it back. She's done brilliantly to do that twice already, but she might get out of this one yet, but it's, it's draining to keep putting yourself under this pressure. Good tea serve, wasn't it? Yeah, responding. responding once again. But Radicani can take a lot of heart from that. She really is getting into these games, getting under Burridge's skin. Just made it on the volley. Shaped up for that with enough angle to make sure it went over the net again. Could easily have popped it into the net. Once again, Jodie Burridge recovers really well from a perilous position on serve. Upper set, and she's now 2-1 ahead in the second set.
Raducanu trying very hard indeed to level things up with Burridge, but Burridge very determined to just keep her advantage. She's hung on to some tough service games of late. Giving a little extra time to uh, re-grip her racket before coming back out for more. Good depth in that corner. Asking a tough question of Radicanu. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it doesn't really feel like Burridge is redlining at all. It, it feels like, yeah, she's going to keep doing this for the rest of the match. And Radicanu needs to try and find a way to muscle her way. And she's been knocking on the door. She's been so, so close the last yeah. few games. She's got to keep going with that. You've got to think, surely she'll get a breakthrough. That's nice because sometimes with the big hitters, you, know, you can have a day where it all goes in. But we've been watching Jodie for a few weeks now, and we know that this is this is her new level, mm -hmm. and it's well above where she's ranked at 280. She's playing like a top 200 player and pulling that out consistently and in all different sorts of situations. As I think Radicanu is, for sure. I think she's grown a little more through the weeks. What we saw from her yesterday and today put her in the same category already. Oh, the, the hope must be that sooner rather than later they get the chance to compete elsewhere and, and really take this this form into those kind of contests to improve their level even further. The worry is that you know, as great as this format is, and it has been well received all round, players organizers people watching it that you know it'll stall again because of yeah. lockdown now it's the same for everybody in well, the same for so many situations for people in sport Jody's boyfriend Ben plays for the Leicester Tigers rugby they were back in action yesterday but they didn't come up with a win they were beaten by Exeter be hoping for bragging rights tonight when she goes back home but um, that has missed the mark and again Radicanu an early lead on the Burridge service game that it took a while but Marcus has got his popcorn out he's he? enjoying it <laughs> <laughs> he's back in training tomorrow though he's making the most popcorn's of not bad for you popcorn's a great snack <laughs> and all other good supplies yeah. but I think this match is worthy of a bit of popcorn <laughs> share it around Marcus Fourth service game in a row for Burridge down.
again facing break points. Definitely the time for popcorn. got what she's been after for a while and very nearly grabbed previously but now with a breakthrough it is Radicanu who does lead set number two we'll see if she can build on that next but uh, back to the chair a few seconds to consider what next and certainly be pleased that uh, she has managed to do some damage now to the Burridge serve 3-2 in the second set Only 17 years of age, Emma Ranakanu is determined to put her name in lights. She's got herself this shot at the title. And she's got herself now a, a stronger position in this second set. Burridge played it, obviously hit a very good return. There was no call against the serve. And yet Radicanu thought that she would be uh, hitting a second serve rather than having to hit a first one now at Love 15. Joining court, Beth Gray, who had that battle a couple of days ago with Radicanu. She's up a set, 7-5 and 1 love against Sonny Cartel. side changing the direction absolutely nails this just been loving the attitude from Carney through this match because you know Jodie's been playing fantastically well this has been such a high quality match she was just so so close and and all she's been trying to do is say okay well I need to play better I'm gonna play better I'm going to keep putting that pressure on as I say, it took four attempts, really, to finally get that breakthrough. You know, often when you play matches, your opponent, especially if your opponent's a bit more experienced, a bit older, like this sort of situation, you know, they sort of set the level, and it's up to you as to how you respond and how you improve and, and step up and... The requirements for Radicanu on this court to compete uh, or to end up beating Burridge are, are so demanding. 
But she's just taking it on. She's just saying, okay, well, I'm just going to do my best to get to the level that is required to win this match. And if she ends up falling a little short, like she did when they played earlier in the event, then you know she'll learn from that and improve like she always does. hitting just total belief in what she's applying to the ball there and, and she's finding a way to get up the court and she got up the court of quite a few shots earlier than this last one you dictate from there and it just hurts Jody that little extra bit she's obviously come through brilliantly this week to get to this final Naomi but for those people perhaps who watching don't watch a lot of the British juniors, or indeed at this level, coming through, is she the absolute standout for her age in the British game? Yeah, pretty comfortably, uh, I think, to be honest. For in terms of the teenagers coming through, pretty much the focus is on Radhikani, has been for a couple of years now. the right shot and she liked the look of and on the men's side just going back to that sort of in terms of teams late teams Jack Draper yeah Jack Draper well, he's pretty outstanding even on a global scale he's right up at the top for, for his age group um, Anton Matusevic a little bit behind him same age similar age Stating shot off this ball. It's not all about age when it comes down to it. We've seen many players kind of break through very young and then struggle. Yeah, she's definitely made a deliberate choice to stick up more to the baseline now and just soak up that pace by getting down lower. I think that's a real benefit for her but I mean even for Burridge okay she's a few years older at, at 21 but she's had so much time out with ankle surgery she's yes. pretty underdone when it comes yeah. to competing so I almost feel like she's sort of a an 18 19 year old mm. getting to where she is she's had so many interruptions in her career already I was going to say, Burridge is enjoying the new <laughs> rules. No ball kids, no lines <laughs> judges to worry about. Just a curtain. Can't get in trouble for that. Well, this might all but decide the second set for Radicanu here. She gets another break. Good play again from Radicanu, the teenager, just lapping it all up. I mean, they weren't easy balls necessarily to get to and hit as well back as she did, but boy, did they come back. And she is indeed up 5-2, almost there in terms of taking this second set.
Right, just got to find something a bit more now to uh, douse the flames coming from the other side. Rabbit Khan is right on this at the moment. Look at that. Smack in the corner. Fine return, too far with the second shot. on target. Another bullseye from Emma Raducanu. And she has three set points. of the ball. Raducanu saying, OK, I've got my A game now really on song, going into what will be a match tie-break to decide the outcome of this women's final. Excellent stuff from the teenager. And Burridge needs to find something a little more herself after Raducanu grabs the set. Six games to two. Let's uh, very shortly, hopefully, have a word with her. Just give her a moment to catch her breath, put the headset on. And then you can talk to her now. Hey, Radar, it's Cavs. Hey. hey, how about that for a second set? I mean, it was a strong marker put down by Jody in the first, but you responded well. What, what did you do differently? I think that um, the level throughout the match has been quite high. Like, we're both having quite long rallies, and um, yeah, she came out on some important ones in, in the first set at some key moments, and I think there wasn't much in the first set. Um, second set I just tried to stay in it and uh, yeah take it one at a time. You've been putting the Jodie Burridge serve under a lot of pressure through this second set you were up on quite a number of occasions before you did finally make the breakthrough have you have you found that you're now reading the serve a bit better or feeling more comfortable? Um, well when I went up in the beginning of the second set um, she was just coming back with like two or three unreturnables so I'd say um, I'm just trying my best but you know it's quite unpredictable. All right, thanks, Emma. Thank you, Mum. Well, it comes down to this. Who is going to walk away with first prize? And a check for $20,000. The runner-up will receive $15,000. But it's about the title right now for these two. And uh, having produced a final of such quality already, Hopefully we are about to witness something spectacular in conclusion. It will be Burridge to start the match tiebreak. Of course, she won the last one they played. And she starts with a good serve. It's <laughs> one of the biggest serves she's hit in the match. Oh. Very close to the corner of that box, but a great serve to begin. Of the problems she'd had on serve in that second set, not making good starts to games on serve. Well, that was a cracking beginning to this match tiebreak by her.
the angle Raducanu produces in the middle of that fierce rally. Something special again. And although Burridge got to the ball, she couldn't control ultimately where it went. And Marcus, how impressed have you been by Raducanu's hitting, particularly in that second set coming into this tiebreak? So, so accurate. Um, taking it early. Didn't change too much after the first set, apart from, yeah, as Naomi said, taking the ball a bit closer to the baseline. Mm -hmm. Staying low. Um, but she she was piling pressure on Burridge's serve uh, like most games. And, and eventually, you know, even though she got herself out of trouble, Jodie, a few times, you, you, at some point you're going to crack. That first set obviously was a, a standard tie break. Burridge went through very quickly. But now the longer version... Will be very close to the finish line. Just having to uh, hit a ball back to the other court. And now we are ready to resume. One all. since she's missed a shot like that. Yeah, I don't think she really gave Burridge anything in that second set. Any gifts on offer. Went big. Oh, perhaps just suddenly showing a bit of nervous tension, anxiety, trying to get back the, uh, the deficit. the one who won in the round robin in their match tie break getting a good lead in this one now that's three unforced errors in a row from Radicanu and I don't think we saw any shots like that really in the second at all so a marked change 10-6 yeah, on Thursday that she clinched it 4-1 up now on this Sunday afternoon in a row, sort of a basic rallying ball there. Okay, yeah, it was good depth, it was good quality from Burridge. It wasn't an easy shot for Raducanu, but something she'd been expecting to find the court with. What can we glean from those numbers? Obviously, Raducanu finally making the breakthroughs that she had been uh, so close to doing, knocking on the door vigorously, loudly, through the Burridge service games and eventually did break twice to uh, take command of it. But right now, that's it. Well, that is obviously history. It's all about this current position that she's in, which is not a good one. 1-5 one down as they change ends for the first time in the match tie break.
up to that board, dropped a little lower than she was anticipating, ended up reaching for it. Again, something we've not really seen from her. She's looked so sharp, body weight leaning forward right up on the baseline that that wouldn't have caught her out before. Pushed her back brilliantly there. I mean, Burridge coming forward, short ball, but doesn't put it away. Has to retreat, and straight away, Marcus Raducanu sees that and exploits the situation. Very, very good. Took it nice and early. Never looked like she's going to miss that. Um, and kept herself in the side break. 7-2 would have been very, very tough. 6-3 is doable. to uh, really open up things, use the full width of the court. Burridge coming back as quickly as she can. But unable to do any more than that to that last ball. Can she close the gap even more? Oh, can she? That's yeah. a sumptuous sh combination. Just again, the, the way she really gets down to the ball and makes sure of the stroke, as you said, being able to you know, take it on, coming back with pace, but because she's down right behind it, she can get that swing through. Yeah, I mean, Burridge did, I mean, she hit the perfect return. I mean, to go cross the body into that right hip and force that off shot, that's the most difficult shot for Raducani to play there, and she's just done that with ease, really, just getting down so low, yeah. good. Well, I felt it was a big moment in the match, having come back as far as she has, and now she's leveled up. Raducanu, Burridge miss, missing the forehand. And what next from these two? They've given everything to the cause today as you'd expect in the final and you'd hope to see that they could still live up to the billing of this title decider and we haven't been disappointed far from it it's been a very very powerful fiercely contested match and nobody's got an idea who's going to win it have we no and again it's, here? it's the quality <laughs> it's whoever's going to produce the quality it's been a it's been such a fabulous match, this. Exactly what we were looking for in the final. And I think, to be honest, it's it's incredibly impressive, but it's not that surprising based on what we've seen from Burridge mm -hmm. and Raducanu through the week. And that's as big a compliment as I can <laughs> give I them. Yeah. It's a phenomenal level, but this is what I was looking forward to today. Well, how important is this point for Burridge, particularly after... Raducanu has recovered from 1-5 down to even it up. Six points all. tight she didn't release the shot and now we can see her sensing her feeling the pressure and Radicani might just roll on from here to the title course but it really does feel incredibly tense right now we're all waiting wondering what next another mistake from Burridge really a ball that Earlier in the match, you would have expected to come back strongly. But the pressure.
pressure on the scoreboard now. And the situation in the match so close, perhaps, to its conclusion. Vicanu at 8-6. Two more points required for her. Rotation coming in with a little bit of tightness there. It was there to be struck. Burridge again to serve, back on serve. It's still a point behind. Good point. Doing it absolutely right down the middle with the serve and a strong second shot. Well, one of these two will get to championship point in a moment, but which one of them? It's a fairly big point, this one. It's gone right down to the wire, but down into the net from Burridge, and that could be fatal for her hopes in this final. It is match point for the youngest player of the week. 17-year-old Emma Ranakanu is up 9-8 now and poised for what would be an excellent conclusion to the series. Brilliant win for her if she can nail this now to avenge the loss in the round-robin stage to Burridge. Moment comes right here. The teenager takes it. Radicanu is the champion. Burridge beaten in the end and bitterly disappointed. The racket's gone flying. She's so upset to have lost that ultimately. But she has to acknowledge that Radakanu pipped her to the post in the end and has taken the title here. And now you can sense a bit of emotion in there. And you'll get her reaction in due course. But she's just off to uh, pick up the towel, come back to her chair and to uh, really take stock of what she's achieved. Matt James there alongside a few words from him. And well, wow, what a player at 17 to have done what she's done this week. Burridge beat her to uh, top the group in the round robin. But come the final match, it has gone the other way. And Jody Burridge, runner up, it is Emma Radakanu who has claimed the title so impressively. She's done it 6 7, 6 2, 10 8. Naomi, your thoughts? I just so impressed.